So if we look at what our challenge is, is how we transform this education system in New Zealand. And I'm really optimistic about this. And we're a little country and we can do this. But we've got to move from that regulated approach into what I call permissionless innovation. And now, not where we actually have to talk and work and worry and think of all the reasons why not, because if what we can do now we think is challenging in five years' time, man, it's going to make today look like a walk in the park in terms of the challenges to your own mindset. You know, thinking about compulsory attendance and compulsory sort of pathways to global participation, and we talked a bit about that earlier, to the wonderful pre-entry criteria of will we, can you be part of this? And especially when we go from that, that gap from secondary to tertiary. And some of you have heard me talk about the black box of pre-entry criteria into some of our tertiary institutions. You know, this is who I am. And I wait to hear, yes, you're good enough, you can come in. Um, and versus open access. Now, there's a whole lot of issues in there. There's funding issues and all sorts of things that we have to think about. But are we starting to think about that's where we want to head to? Fees versus free participation. And what will that do is that becomes we're global and there are other options in terms of where people will choose to be. Institutional rules, you must attend, you must do this many hours, it has to be in this form, you must be in these hours. No, you can't do it at this time. Two, actually virtual, you just do it however you want to do it, which is the life that we all are living in. And people like regulators like NZQA who've said, we will tell you when it's of the standard, we will be up the upholder of your record, we won't recognise that I went and spent a day with you and that was actually really valuable and you would certify it. Two, how do we verify participation in life that is valuable in you talking to someone about what you've got to offer? And is it all locked up in our system or have we now embraced blockchain? And have we got it where it's capturing your participation in time, locking it in so it's your record that you keep? And is it a qualification or is it a whole lot of bits that are describing who you are and what you can bring to the opportunity ahead? And the institutions, the bricks and mortar to the open source flexibility. So I said I'm optimistic. And as I said, from where I was last year and I talked to some of you, we've moved on. And we haven't just moved on in the form of a new minister, but it's very interesting seeing the rhetoric in, out of Sunday's paper, interview with Nikki Kay, what do I want? A digitally fluent, healthy, and well-rounded kids coming out of our system. It's got two elements that are strong there, that have come into the headline, digitally fluent, all of them, be they dancers, artists, mathematicians, social workers, whatever they are, but they've got a digital fluency because that can help all of those disciplines and participation and healthy. And what does that look like? And what is healthy in a well-rounded uh, space? And of course in May, Earlier this month, we announced the calls, which in the education system, I understand I was actually out of the country, but lots of discussion and people think it's good and bad, but they are communities of online learning. And they are going to develop it and consult and it'll be 2020, which is quite a long way away. Communities of online learning. Remember, online doesn't mean you're just on a screen in a room. You could be holistically connected with a whole lot of people. You could be participating in those things that I've described that are there. So in terms of thinking about that as an opportunity, it's got a lot of work to happen, but it's a direction of travel that we certainly want, I think, open up. 
our curriculum per se enables us to, to support and develop and assess 21st century skills. It's just that we're subject to assess at the moment. So we haven't used a lot of the enablement that's in our curriculum at the moment. And the likes of NZQA, as you, I'm sure you know, we're doing our digital online anytime, anywhere assessment. And we started the first one four years ago, and I think we had, I can't remember the stats now, but maybe it was 50 kids, one or two schools. Absolute disaster. Because no touch screens. Where do I do the scribble on the side? as I'm going to answer the, the question. Um, some of the kids put in front of a computer to do the assessment and have never been, never done an assessment on a computer ever before. First time was in the pilot. So we've moved on with that and we're finding more and more and the, the negative side is as valuable as the positive side because it helps us move forward and with the kids and the schools we're working with. And of course, it's challenging a bigger question. Well, what is it we are assessing? And is it we're assessing everyone as an individual? Where do teams come into it? How could you choose to collaborate and use whatever information is available? And how would you make all of that work? So we've got that program of work underway. We are doing work with 3M and Francis Valentine on blockchain <coughs> verification. Um, and looking at how you can use that to capture your record of learning. And we are looking at this badging, and badging is the jargon term, but that is, you go to that Udacity, pro, that little pilot I talked about, how can you get a badge that verifies you were there, that says that this is what you did, rather than it's always about a completion qualification. So wrapping up, what does this mean for all of us, for schools, for parents, for the few students that are here, um, uh, for the teachers, and of course we could have put employers there as well, but what does it mean for all of us in the system? The biggest thing is to look inwardly at our mindset. Our mindset of what we think is, is great and is needed. And you know when we're presented with new ideas, like the executive that spends their day with VR goggles on and that's how they do their work, I saw one person, she laughed. You know what we mostly do? If it's that strange, we laugh. It's sort of like, yeah, okay. I get this, but this is really weird. Or we're at the conference and one of our mates is there as a beam robot. robot. So last week, I was at Westfield in San Francisco in their main innovation lab. And two of the people attending the meeting with us were on beam, were beam robots. But it wasn't just like having a um, video conference where you beamed in the people. The robots unplugged themselves and came down the hall and into the room and then sat there, person took their, the, and then they wanted to look at the screen, so they went around. It's right here, right now. So our mindset is, phew, how do we feel about that? How do we feel about our kids being part of that Udacity program with the autonomous vehicle when we'd actually counted on them going to Auckland Uni to do something and it was some paradigm we really knew about. So for me, what we have to think about doing is remove the hand block, handbrakes of our old paradigms. As students, so some of this can feel like if I only would do it, wouldn't it be great for students? A whole lot of students what they know is what they've heard from the time they were born, the kids that are leaving your schools to this year. 
you need to do this, you'll need to do that, this is what, it, this is what you need to be safe, this is what will get you a, a job, this is what will enable you to be um, fully expressed, but this is how it is. So when, and there's been some research done, when you present them with the option of, what about this way, they're really fearful about that. They've got a handbrake about, no, no, that's, I get it, I sort of get it, but this is what I've heard. The parents, so my son came home from second year at Christchurch Polytech and said, Mum, I'm not going back. And I went, oh my God, I didn't go like that to him because I wouldn't want to do that to him. But inside I went, oh my God, completion, you know, if you can't complete, you can never achieve anything in life. What will it mean, blah, blah, blah. He's in the States, he's now sales and marketing manager for a five-year startup that has got 80% growth per annum and he's done the rest of it vocationally. He's fine. He did it a different way. And, and for the teachers, the teachers that, what does this mean? How do they approach it? And I don't know whether you're participating, but you look at that program that's on at the Mind Lab. It's the biggest postgraduate training program in New Zealand, single program, where teachers are enrolled and looking at digitizing, working in a digital way and a collaborative way. So we have to remove the handbrakes um, of our old paradigm and support the momentum for change. And some of you heard me say at Singularity, I can't wait till the Bunsen burner is up our bottom absolutely as NZQA and people saying you are going way too slow. No one have I heard say 2020 to be totally digitized, that's way too slow. In fact, usually you just hear what are the problems and how it can't be and, and the kids on screens and this is a terrible thing. So we support this momentum for change. Nikki Kay coming out with this and bit, she hasn't changed it, she's put some and on it. How might we as a nation also be totally digitally fluent and, and well and healthy and have those foundation literacies and have them equitably across New Zealand? So first is check in and remove the handbrakes of the old paradigm. Support the momentum for change and look at education beyond bricks and mortar. So bricks and mortar are about boys' height, are about girls' height, are about cathedral grammar. And so many of our providers in New Zealand are doing great things at the edge. They're doing some great things of using participation with others at the edge. But how do we make sure the bricks and mortar are not the constraint, but are the asset of the future? And how do we invest in upskilling? And so... My parting comment to myself, to all of you, is put aside your fear and be involved in this transformation. Have conversations as a board of trustees of how might we do it, not what is all the reasons it could be bad. As parents, how might we? As students, how might we? As the educationalists here, how might we? And make sure we are getting in the mindset of how do we prepare our nation, all of us, including our kids, for the world we live in so they can live really fulfilling lives. Thanks very much.